God, we honor you, we magnify you, Father God, through the blood. Oh Lord, we magnify you today. We don't take it for granted, God, but we're blessed, Father God, Lord, to be in the land of the living. Father God, we're blessed, God, Lord, to have our faculty. We're blessed, God, Lord, to be able to use our legs, our feet. We're blessed to be able to use our arms, our hands, our fingertips. We see that our eyes, our ears, hallelujah. We don't take it for granted, God, so many of us take so much stuff for granted. Oh, God, Lord, we're so silly-minded, God, Lord, we're so, Father God, Lord, unfocused, Father God, Lord. Oh, God, for Father God, we come today just to say thank you. Hallelujah. We're so grateful, Father God, Lord, for the small things, God, Lord. We don't have to do anything. Hallelujah, God, but we do, God, Lord. We thank you, Father God, Lord. We magnify you, Father God, Lord. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. Oh, God, because you're the great I am, God, Lord. Hallelujah. Besides you, there is no other. Oh, Lord, we give you the praise that you deserve. We give you the honor that you deserve. Come on, somebody. Give, give, give it to him this morning. Give it to him. Give it to him this morning. Give it to him this morning. We give you glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you today. We bless you today. Oh, we're not going to let a rock cry out and not stand, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you today. Even now, Father God, we pray that you just continue to show yourself strong even in this service. God, continue, Father God, to hold the mantle of this atmosphere. We thank you for this natural atmosphere. We thank you for the visual atmosphere. Even now, God, we pray that you have your way. Any spirit that's not like God, we command you to leave and take your flight. Even now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the spirit of discord, in the spirit of strife. Hallelujah. We bind you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Any demonic puppet, God, Lord, that we have made that we walk in here with, we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Any black magic, any voodoo, any ogre, any juju, any satania, any lupa, any word curse, we bind it now in the name of Jesus. We send it back to center, and we bind it to the center with the blood of Jesus. Hey, God, any spirit, any darkness, God, we pray that you pray you transform it into light from the very roots and crannies of this edifice. Hallelujah, Father, for that to those that were watching you today. We magnify you today. We thank you today. Hallelujah. And once again, have your way. Touch the sacred play. May the only thing we could have to say, even now in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Somebody say amen. One more time for the Holy Spirit. We say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have your Bibles, glory to God. I want you just to listen in and bear with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I want you to pull them out of, the, out of your sheaves. Glory to God. Just raise them in the air with me. Raise them in the air like this. Don't care. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. Hallelujah. This is my Bible. There are many like it. This one is mine. I will read it. And see what it says. I will study it. And show myself approved. It is a lamp into my feet. It's a light into my path. And because of it, I am, I am blessed in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Glory to God. If you could turn in those holy Bibles to the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Glory to God. If you get there, just say, I have the word. I have the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read for the sake of time, even though you're still turning. Amen. Hallelujah. Or texting your way there. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. Hallelujah. I'll start from verse 1. It says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come. Somebody say suddenly. Suddenly. Come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi 
and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former years, and I will come near you for judgment, I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away and alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances, and you have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now. Somebody say, and try me. Try me. Now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, then pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fall or fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have, you, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept this ordinance? And that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts. So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Then those who fear the Lord spoke to me and to one, to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before them. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. If I had to put a, a title to this message today, it would simply be God's Rightful Share. God's Rightful Share. Have you ever done all of the work in a project or in a business or in a collaboration and not get any of the credit? Amen. Amen. Have anybody ever done something? Go to God. Amen. And you remember you were little, go to God, and your mom and dad would tell you to do something. <clears throat> go to God. Amen. And then the one time that you do it without them telling you, they think that somebody else did it. And you have to say, Well, I know I did that. Yeah. All right. Go to God. Amen. If anybody ever done anything, go to God. And people have given other people the credit for your work. All right. Go to God. Well, how about uh you did, you know, you, you mow the grass, you mow the grass, or you raked all of the leaves, or you know, or you know, you paid somebody's bill for them, or you did something, whatever, and they gave somebody else the credit. They thank somebody else. Welcome to God. They thank somebody else. Have anybody ever been there before? Welcome to God. How does that make you feel? Welcome to God. Do anybody remember how that made them feel? Welcome to God. Amen. When someone else get the credit for your work. When somebody else has got the credit for your hard work, when somebody else has got the credit for your sweat, when somebody else has got the credit for your tears, how about when somebody else has gotten the credit for your intellectual property? Anybody ever written anything or said anything or came up with something, amen, that other people use, glory to God, as if, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, it came from them. Has that ever happened to anybody? How did that make you feel? Glory to God. There's nothing worse than not getting the amount of anything that you're worth or that you deserve. 
there's nothing worse than not getting or being treated like, let me say like that, what you're worth. Glory to God. When you know your worth, when you know who you are, and there's nothing like not being treated like who you are. There's nothing like being treated beneath your worth. Hallelujah. And this is what we do to God. Amen. And we need to learn this principle to ensure that we always, amen, give him what is rightfully his. Amen. We want to always make sure that God gets his rightful share, so to speak. And when we talk about this, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, we're not going to be on it. Malachi 3 is known as the money the money chapter, amen, talking about tithes and offering, but we're not just talking about that, amen, because how many know that God, he deserves his rightful share when it comes to praise? Yes, Lord, amen. How many know that God deserves his rightful share when it comes to time? Amen. Time is a, is a big factor with God, amen? How can you say you meditate on God when you don't spend any time in his presence? Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't say, you can't have a real fruitful prayer life if you don't spend any time in his presence. You've got to spend time in his presence to even pray to him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and I heard about this restaurant called Karma. Anybody ever heard about this restaurant called Karma? Hallelujah. There's no menu. You know why? You just get what you deserve. Praise God. Come on, take it as the nation does that's not my joke. Praise God. Glory to God. Of course, we're Christians and we don't believe in karma. Glory to God. But y'all understand what karma is, right? Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We believe in purpose. And we believe in heavenly divine predestination. Glory to God. Amen. We believe, amen, in God hot, heavenly fate. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But in other religions, other cultures, they call it karma. Karma. So to speak, faith. Amen. You get what you deserve. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's a fourfold law of the harvest as I get into this today. Let me just give it to you up front. Amen. And I'll talk around it for the rest of this sermon. Amen. The fourfold law of the harvest. Number one, you reap if you sow. You reap if you sow. Glory to God. So many of us are trying to reap things, amen, but we have not sowed. Amen. We have not put a seed in the ground, so to speak. Amen. To get, amen, something, amen, from the work, amen, praise God, the toil, amen, that we have put in. How can you expect to receive if you have not put in? All right. Come on, sir. Do you know that we're living in a generation where so many people are expected to receive, amen, but they don't want to do any work? Right. Glory to God. Praise God. Somebody told me last week, I don't know if it's true, amen, that the next stimulus package, amen, will give people $2,000 a month until the end of whatever they call the pandemic or whatever is over. Can you imagine what that what will happen? Amen, if that passes. Now I know everybody said it's great, and I want the $2,000 too, yes. Please don't leave me out, President, Mr. Biden, glory to God. Did you understand that so many people will be like, I don't need to work. I am, I'm fine, glory to God. It's bringing us so much closer to what people call socialism, right. where the government takes care of everything for you. And it might sound good if you're lazy, but how many know that would be the end of America the way that we know it? Right. Glory to God, amen. We are a capitalist society. Glory to God, amen. When people work, glory to God, and come up with new ideas and businesses and all these kind of things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we need to understand the politics, amen. We need to pay attention to what's going on because the enemy can lull you to sleep by giving you what he, what he knows that you want. Ah. Going, some of y'all going to put that on your way home. Oh Hallelujah. Yes. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says if you don't work, you shouldn't even eat. Right. Right. Glory to God. Yes. And so you reap if you sow. You can't go out in your, in your garden, and man, if anybody have a front lawn, you can't go out there and expect to get some collard greens right. if you ain't putting no collard green seeds uh -huh. in the ground. Right, mama? Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got to yeah, man, we got to put some seeds in the ground if we expect to get the the fruit, the, yeah. the vegetables or the fruit or whatever we want to glory or whatever we're planting. Praise God. So you reap it yourself. Glory to God. Amen. That's on so many levels. Amen. Glory to God. You reap it yourself. If you reap, amen, uh, encouraging words, if you reap loving thoughts, if you reap loving actions, how many know you'll get back blessings? For amen. Blessing, amen. You will get back, praise God, encouragement, amen, from that person. Amen. 
Glory to God. You will get back love from that person. The Bible says a, a, a friend showeth himself friendly. And a lot of people say, I don't have any friends, and it seems like people don't want to be my friend. Amen. But how friendly are you? All right. Look at God. Amen. How friendly are you? Praise God. There's a reason why people don't want to stay around with you. Glory to God. Are you pleasant? Glory to God. Amen. Are you always speaking good words? Are you always sowing positive vibes? Amen. Or are you nasty? Are you cynical? Are you sarcastic? Or you are, are you controlling? Are you angry? Are you short with people? Glory to God. Amen. How do you carry yourself? Praise God. Praise God. This reaping goes on many different levels. Of course, in this chapter, we're talking about money. We're going to get there. Praise God. Amen. How can we expect God to bless us? Amen. And we don't reap. Amen. Praise God. What he told us to reap. Amen. All right. Glory to God. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I don't want to get there before my time. Amen. Amen. But you reap if you sow. Number two, you reap what you sow. Glory to God. So like I said, if you reap love, you'll get back love. Glory to God. If you want somebody to forgive you, how many know you need to know how to forgive them? Amen. If you give forgiveness, how many know when something happens, somebody won't, they'll be more inclined to forgive you. Yeah. But say, well, you know what? Well, she forgave me. I'm going to forgive her too. He forgave me. I'm going to forgive him too. Whatever the case is. You know? You, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Glory to God. Somebody, could, you, you can't be nasty to a person and expect them to be nice to you. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. You're like, good morning. I don't see nothing so good about it. Why don't you get out of my way? Why don't you leave me alone? Uh, I'm just trying to get in here. Glory to God. Now, when you feel nice, now you want somebody to be nice to you. Good morning. You're like, I ain't saying nothing to you. The last time you bit my head off because all I said was good morning. All right. I ain't going to say anything to you. Glory to God. You reap what you sow. Glory to God. And a lot of people can't take that. All right? Especially people who act like that. Right? A lot of people can dish it out, but they can't take it back. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. You reap what you sow. If you don't want nobody to do it to you, don't do it to them. Right. All right? Glory to God. What goes around, comes around. Glory to God. And we got to learn how to carry ourselves. This is why one of the golden rules is do unto others as you want them to do unto you, right? Yes. Amen. That's one of the golden rules of the Bible. Treat the people the way you want to be treated. Number three is you reap after you sow. You reap after you sow. Yes, All right? So number one, you reap if you sow. Number two, you reap what you sow. Number three, you reap after you sow. So many of us get discouraged, glory to God, because we're looking for our harvest, so to speak, but, uh, and we haven't sown anything yet. All right. <laughs> glory to God. So you got to sow something if you expect to receive something right. from God. Right. Amen? If you, you got to sow something if you expect to receive something from man and woman. Glory to God. You gotta sow something if you expect to receive something on every single level. Glory to God. Praise God. We get time out for this trying to receive stuff when we have not put the right, the proper time, the proper effort, the proper, the proper courteousness, the proper preparation, the proper work in. Glory to God. We gotta do our part. Praise yeah. God. Thank you reap after you sow. When you put the seed, now the collard greens will grow. After you done pushed up the, up the dirt, you done, you done tilled it around, you done made it nice and put the little stuff around it and put the seed in and packed it back, make sure you got some water on it to make a little bit of fertilizer, make sure it's nice sun hitting you. You got to do all of that before you can do it. Anybody here with me today? Amen. You reap after you sow. Praise God. Amen. So don't forget the process. There's a process in everything we go through in life. Glory to God. Some of us, we have been in the world and we've been doing wrong stuff all of this time. As soon as one day, amen, we decide, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna do this right. All right. We expect, if we go outside and we expect to see your harvest. Anybody here with me today? I'm just saying going outside, but whatever you whatever you're looking for in your life, you just started, you've been messed up for the last 10 years. You've been clubbing, you've been fornicating, you've been smoking and drinking, and you've been cussing. You've been angry. You've been doing all. Oh, can I take care of yourself? And one day, one Sunday, you make up your mind. Oh God, please, I'm sorry. This is it. I, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not. And you go the next day on Monday, and nothing changed. And you're like, oh God. But but yesterday, he's like, yeah. What about the last ten years? Glory to God. 
But we expect things to turn around in one day. But I want to encourage somebody to hang in there for a minute. Amen? So that it takes time to reverse sometimes some of the process, amen, that we have put in place, that we have put in the atmosphere. There's some people, it's going to take time for them to gain, for you to gain their trust back. If you were a crackhead, and man, I'm from South Florida, I grew up in the crackhead era in the 80s and the 90s, glory to God, and they was in there, and man, stealing stuff, you and glory to God, you saw them selling their body for $5, and you saw them doing all this kind of sleeping with, with, with Mookie's daddy and somebody up there, mama, you know, and all, you like, and now they change, you see them in church, I ain't trusting you. <laughs> Just because I see you up there saying, like, this is the day. This is the day. I'm going to look for the next day, the next day, the next day. I want to make sure you change. Glory yeah. to God. Can I come to your house? No, you can't. Glory to God. I love you. Praise God. But um, I'm, that's it. You know, it's going to take a minute. After I see you in there 5, 10, 15 years, <laughs> I'm like, you're all nice. You ain't even changed your life. Glory to God. Praise God. Now, yeah, you didn't have some fruit loops or something. You come on. It's over. All right. Right? I trust you a little bit. Glory to God. Amen. But it takes time. Why? Because the person has reaped, amen, the benefit of my distrust. Glory to God. So you reap after you sow. The number four is you reap more than you sow. Anybody ever plant anything before? You have? Okay. If you plant something before, amen, what do you do? You put some seed in the ground. Glory to God. And then at the proper time, two, three months, amen, or the proper time of the season, whatever, what happens? You go outside and you see all of this stuff. From little seeds. All right? Amen. Mustard seed is the smallest seed. Amen. And it, it grows these big trees. Glory to God. You always reap more than you sow. This is the principle of God. And that's why God is saying, just sow a little bit. Yes. Just get the 10%, which we're going to get to. Give me my 10%. Glory to God. Praise God. And you want to see that you're going to act. I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ever think. Ask what an afford can imagine in your life. But I'm asking you just give me a little bit. Yeah. Listen, just give me one day out of the week, two, three hours. Glory to God. And I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask to or imagine. Come to church, two, three hours. Glory to God. I'm just asking for a little bit. All God needs is a seed. Ah. All he needs is a seed. Tell your neighbor and say, have you put a seed in the ground? Let me put a seed. Praise God. The Bible says faith the size of a mustard seed can what? Move mountains. Can move mountains. I know. That's a biblical principle. Yeah. And then a little bit can move a whole lot. That's a biblical principle. Somebody need to catch that for yourself. Yes, Praise God. Because I'm here to let somebody know and then, that you and your little self, me and my little self, can move mountains. Amen. Me and my little self, you and your little self, yes, we, can, we can move a nation. Yes. We can reach nations. We can reach the world. We can change the world. Glory to God. That is a heavenly principle. Yes, God. Yes. Jesus yes, God. didn't come and get the uh, have a million man march and all that other stuff. All he had was 12. Yeah. And one of them betrayed him. Yeah. And he still Change the world. Yes, God. That's the principle of heaven. A little bit can affect a lot when God is in it. A little bit. A little bit. When God is in it, a yes. little bit is a lot. A little bit is a lot. A, a little bit I mean, is a lot when God. Hallelujah. When is God touching is, it. God is Praise in God. It. Come on. Come on. Listen, baby. when you sow God's way, you can expect to reap more than you ask, yes, think, or can even imagine. But you got to do it his way. Somebody say do it his way. Do it his way. Now, Malachi chapter 3, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. So break this chapter down really fast and get it out of the way. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, saith the Lord of hosts. What is this chapter talking about? Glory to God. This prophesied messenger is none other than John the Baptist. Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, he's prophesying about John the Baptist. Where we remember Jesus said that John is one of is the greatest prophet that ever lived. Glory to God. All right. There's not too many scriptures you can see in the Bible where it prophesies about a man coming besides Jesus, except for John. Isn't that deep? God, there's a special blessing 
for, for, for the people that God has ordained to prepare the way of the Lord. Some of y'all need to catch that. Hallelujah. Some of my ministers out there, some of my, listen, God's calling you is a special blessing. Glory to God for God that for the people that God has his hands on to prepare the way of the Lord. John is an archetype. He's an example. Glory to God. And of his of his Levites, his Levites, amen. The Levitical priesthood, so to speak, of those that will open up their mouth and be a blessing, amen, in the earth realm. Praise God. And so we're talking about John, Matthew 11, 10, Mark 1, 2, Luke 7, 27, which I'm not going to read today. Amen. They each show this promise was fulfilled by John the Baptist. Yeah. Glory to God. And then uh, you need to know that at the end of Malachi 2, in Malachi 3, Israel complained that God seemed to reward the wicked uh, and did not exercise his justice in the world. All right? And, now, and how many know that people are saying that even today in 2021? Anybody ever feel like the wicked is the one that's getting blessed? Yes. God, they ain't serving you, and they just got a new fence. God, they ain't serving you, and they just came back from Cancun. They just came back from Aruba. God, they just came back from Hawaii. God, they just was in Japan and the Eiffel Tower. God, I'm serving you, and I can barely pay my rent. Anybody been there? Amen. God, I'm serving you, and they about to come with the car. God. Anybody ever been there before? Come on, y'all can say amen. Go to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God, I, I, I just want to make sure we can eat this, this, this week. Anybody ever been here? How many know the devil will work on you? Yes, he will. He will work on you. When, he's, when you see everybody around you getting blessed. And you say, well, God, how about me? What about me? And this is what was happening. At the end of Malachi 2, that Israel was complaining that God seemed to reward the wicked more than he did the righteous. Mm -hmm. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so God responds to their complaint by saying, I will set things right with my Messiah. Yes, God. And before him, or but before him will come my messenger. He was prophesying, glory to God, don't worry, Messiah is soon to come. Yes. And I'm going to send a messenger that's going to be a sign. Glory to God. That was John. All right. And he will prepare the way before me. And, then, and, um, and so all you need to know about that is, is that an ancient royal procession. The messenger went before the king to announce his arrival to indicate the route and to remove any obstacles in the road. And so John the Baptist fulfilled this exact ministry to Jesus. All right? And we can also look in Isaiah 40, which we're not going to do today, to, to understand man, that this is what John's purpose was. But God's purpose for bringing this specific prophecy through Malachi in his day was probably because Israel complained that the messianic promises of Haggai and Zechariah were not fulfilled. Here, Malachi showed that the way for the Messiah must be prepared, and they were not ready yet. Mm. Hallelujah. And that's why if you read in Revelations, it says before the return, there's going to be two witnesses oh. in the earth. Anybody ever read that in the book of Revelations? Glory to God. Amen. We all preach that he can come tomorrow, but we know that there's some things that has to take place first. My God. First of all, in the first Timothy, it says that there's going to be a great falling away. We're seeing that right now. Amen? The churches used to be full when I was little. Amen? Now every church seems like they're struggling a little bit just to pull up the place. Lord. Praise God. Everybody went to church when I was growing up. No matter what you thought about it, you was in church. Praise God. And like I said last week or wherever, I said there's going to be a revival before God comes back. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. God said there's going to be two witnesses that's going to come, and they're going to come, and amen, a fire is going to come out of their mouth. Amen. And there's a lot of ways you can look at that prophecy. Amen. Some people say it's going to be Moses and Elijah. Glory to God. Praise God. But how many know you can also take it as it's going to be two nations that are going to be um, that's going to be in place right at the time before Jesus comes back. Maybe it can be Israel and the United States. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. But it has to be two Christian nations, two nations that are going to be on fire for God. Amen. That's going to turn the world back because it's going to be at a time, I believe, not soon from now. Please hear me on this. But we got, amen, that there's going to be a push to do away with individual religion. Yes, sir. Soon, not too long, not too, too, too far from now, there's going to be a push for a one world governmental religion. It's coming. And it's prophesied in the book of Revelations. Amen. It has to be a one world currency, it has to be a one world leader. 
and it has to be a one world religion. Amen? Before, glory to God, the Messiah comes back. Glory to God. Praise God. All right? Why? Because the Antichrist is revealed in the Bible before Jesus comes back. All right? The Antichrist is already revealed in the Bible. Amen? And there's war, and there's rumors of war, and it seems like the Christians are going to be taken out of here before Jesus comes back. All right? So all of these things are going to happen. Hmm. That's why you have to watch out for cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, all of these different things. Why? Because the money is not backed by anything. Right? The dollar, the U.S. dollar, the euro, and all of that's backed by gold, right? It's backed by, but what is the, the cryptocurrency backed by? Nothing. <laughs> it's backed by, glory to God, and then it's backed by technology. It's backed by science, all right? And I'm not even going to go there with you today, but these are things that the Christian is supposed to be thinking about. Glory to God. Praise God. All right? And so soon, what's going to happen when they say you can't spend a dollar to glory to God and then to go to the zoo? Amen. You got to use a certain kind of currency. When that is in place, how many know now they're going to be in control of the whole world? Because now you're not even going to be able to hide. Let's say, go to God, if you wanted to do something, amen, that's out of the norm. For those people that are still drinking, you want to go into somewhere and get you some wine, go to God. But you, you don't want nobody to know that, amen. But if you don't have regular money, Glory to God, I mean, you know, they want to know everything you do. I can go further. Y'all understand what I'm saying, but I'm being nice. Glory to God. What's going to happen when all of these things are in place and now they really have full control over us? These are things to think about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But why I said all that to say is because there's going to be a witness. Glory to God. I believe that that's going to be a time where people are going to stand up and say, this ain't right. That's what we really want to know, that we are not far away from, from Jesus back in that sky. And I believe that as these things happen, glory to God, you want to see nations, glory to God, amen, a group of people, glory to God, amen, that's going to be so powerful, amen, and God's going to allow us to work, amen, hallelujah, with those powers, amen, glory to God, amen, that the Old Testament prophets used to work with, amen, and the New Testament apostles work with, amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be such a, a, an awesome time on the earth, but it's also going to be a hard time in many ways. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God's purpose, hallelujah, uh, for bringing this prophecy is because Israel was complaining. Glory to God. Amen. And he was letting them know that they ain't ready yet. And, I, and, when, and every time I do something, I always prepare you first. Oh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is about to bless somebody. God is about to bless somebody hallelujah. that's watching. Glory to God. But he has to prepare you first. All right, sir. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. He's preparing you because if he bless you right now, you might miss the prep. You might miss the blessing. Yes. If he bless you right now, you might squander it. If he bless you right now, you might mess it up. If he would have blessed you last year, you wouldn't even be here right now. If he would have blessed you a couple years ago, some of you wouldn't even be watching the Christian station. Right my now. God, my God. Praise God. But because God allowed God. you to go through some things. But because God allowed you to lose some stuff, because God allowed you to lose some people, glory to God, and all of these different things, hallelujah, here you are. Now he got your attention. Yes, and God. now you have been prepared. And now he can really tell you and show you the great marvelous things that Thank he really you. wants to show you. Thank you. Hallelujah. He says, before me, see, the Lord promised that he himself would come. Not merely a new or better prophet, Hallelujah. We're not like Muslims looking for the proper word. But he said that he is going to come. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord himself. Even the messenger of the covenant. All right. And the second messenger is the, is the Lord himself. So when you read Malachi 3.1, he's talking about John and Jesus in that same scripture. John is the preparer. Jesus is the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. He's coming. All right. Malachi 3.2. It says, but who can endure the day of his coming? Yeah. And you know, how many people here think they're ready? <laughs> it's a tough question. Yeah. Ooh, are you ready? We all like come back, Jesus. If you came right now, are you ready? Oh or do you have something in your heart? Oh, are you really ready? Oh, or are you thinking about some pleasure even right now? I can't wait till he stops talking so I can just go here and do something. I got something on my mind. I got something I want to get done. I want to got somebody I want to call. I want to meet. I'm going to plan on traveling somewhere. Come on now. God knows your heart. Are you ready? I want to use my money for something. See? Yeah, God. Mm. 
Who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? How many know you gotta be careful what you pray for? Be careful what you ask for. So many people were saying that, and all those people died, amen, coronavirus, all kinds of stuff over the last year. Were they ready? Were they ready? Was Kobe Bryant ready? Glory to God. Was, uh, uh, I forget his name, uh, my man that played the Black Panther, was he ready? Was all of these people ready? Were they ready? Glory to God. For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. Hallelujah. As in the days of old, as in your former years. I'm going to read this next verse as I already read it, but I want you to remember Malachi 3 5. And he says, And I will come near you for judgment. <clears throat> Does it say that in your Bible? All right, God is a God of grace. But what did he say? I will come near you for what? For judgment. I will be a swift witness. I told y'all last week that the word of God is the personality of God. Please learn his personality. He's going to judge. Amen? And he says, I will, I will be a swift witness against sorcerers. Uh-oh. Against adulterers. Uh-oh. Against perjurers. When you go to court, they put your right hand and you swear to tell the truth, hold to the number you do help you got. I sure do. And you get up there and lie. <laughs> Glory to God. The glove, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. All right, anyway, but anyway, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners. Oh, there's a lot of people that do that, right? Oh, yeah. We want to get the Hispanics over here and Mexicans, we want to give them a dollar, 25 cent an hour, right? They under the table, we want to smuggle them in. How many of these people are going to be judged? Yeah. Glory to God, the minimum wage is $7.25. Glory to God, and we want to pay you $3.50. Hmm. Exploit wage earners and widows and orphans. People, how many know some people, you, we don't, we don't, you know, when you look at that system, I have a bunch of friends that are social workers. Glory to God, and man, some of the kids go through so much. People that are orphans, foster cares. And how many know some of these kids get passed around from family to family and one person abused them, sexually abused them, mentally abused them, verbally abused, physically abused them. They go to another family, they get sexually abused and verbally abused, and they go to another family. And by the time they're on their sixth family, these kids are messed up. Talking about, demon, talking about demons and all. Why? Not because of anything they did, but because they were young and they couldn't, they couldn't fight, they couldn't do anything about it. And some people, some of them didn't even know that what was happening to them was wrong because everybody did it to them. Mm. It's tough. Yeah. But how do you know that God says, I'm going to judge these people? My God. My some God. people get these kids just so they can make them do all of the work in the house. Ah. And they get them and they, oh, there's some, some situations I can go further and we make you cry. We make you cry. Glory to God. But God says, I'm going to judge these kind of Hallelujah. people. Some of us may have our own kids and we treat them like that. God says, I'm going to judge these people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. People who exploit widows and orphans. And, and, and he says, I'm against those who turn away any alien because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Praise God. We have to understand, hallelujah, that he is like, uh, he is, he's like a refiner's fire, like a launderer's soap. The coming of the second messenger will be awesome and terrible, but with a purpose. Because if you look at the example that the scripture gives us, the launderer and the refiner, they come to clean. They come to clean, not to destroy. All right. And he says, I'm coming to clean up the place. Amen? Amen? I'm coming to clean the sons of Levi. I'm coming to refine, glory to God, my men and my woman of God. Glory to God. How many know that's the purpose of the preparation? Some of us are going through a hard time, even now. But God is just refining you. God is just cleaning you. Yes, Back in the day, <laughs> even when I was younger, I had we had a um uh, uh, we had um what you call it um uh the thing that wash your clothes or a washing machine, but it had the ringer on it. All right, and it was in the basement. 
Glory to God. And we were able to go down there and put your clothes and the wringer would go and it, and it would dry. It would wring out your clothes to the point amen, where it would dry your clothes out. Glory to God. All right. And you had the thing, glory to God, where you can actually, you can wash your clothes on it. All right. You get a special soap and you can wash your clothes. Anybody ever seen that or experienced that? Yeah, glory to God. Amen. You wash your clothes. And how many know that that's what God does sometimes? Amen. He gets you. Glory to God. And some of you is in a tough situation and he got you and all he's doing is washing you. And how many you know when he's washing you, it don't feel that good. You're squirming. You're like, God, this is crazy. But he just said, people, just be quiet. Got you. Let me get behind your ear. Come on, let me get you. Let me get you behind your back. Well, boy, have you ever washed your back? Anybody ever you, you don't wash your back. Your mom and dad ever washed you up before? You need to wash your back. Ooh, it's nasty back here. You gotta wash your back. I can't reach my back that easy. You better find out how to wash your back. Use the brush. Glory to God. Oh, look at your knees. Your knees is crusty. Look at this. What are you doing getting between your toes? What's going on? God is just washing you. And he's using laundry or soap. Glory to God. And maybe you had to get your clothes. And you get your clothes. And you get the brush. And you get the soap. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, look at the spot. Oh, that's nice. My God. That's what God is doing. Yes. That little yes. anger that you got in you. God said, oh, yes. let me get you. Let me get you. Let me wash it out. Yes. You know the commercial shout it out? Oh, I'm going to just shout it out. Some of y'all got that little lust in you. That's all. Oh, let me get you. Let me wash it out. Yes. We're going to wash that lust spirit out of you. Oh, my God. Ooh. Some of y'all are addicted to chemicals. You guys, oh, let me just wash it out. He's like a launderer. He's using launderer soap. Glory to God. And so the thing that happened to get your attention is just the soap. Yes. So you losing your job and your ability to get the money to buy the drugs, it was just the soap. And then when God gets your attention, you just talk. Oh yes, Lord. Now you got to go through. Now you got to go cold turkey. When you have you had the money, God yes. take the car away because he don't want you to go see Johnny anymore. Wow. Johnny yes. don't need you no good. So God, John, he got siblings, he got you just don't know it yet. And he got a girl over there, he got all this stuff. Inside. But God is trying to help you. Yes, He's trying to help you. My God. Glory to God. He's a launderer. He's a refiner. Glory to God. He knows what you need. Some of us, we got mental illness going on with us. Yes. That's how I've been praying for last week. Some people are dealing with mental illness. They got mental issues. Seriously. Yeah. And you got to pray against that. And yeah. God will get you and say, listen, get your mind together. And he'll get you and he'll try to wash you. Yes, Jesus. Let your mind, let this mind that is in me be also in you. Is what he said. Stop saying all of this stuff. Thinking all of this dumb stuff. We respond so quickly. And sometimes it's mental illness. Glory to God. And God said, I keep telling you over and over again, be still and know that I am God. I got you in this. And it gets you through one thing and it takes you to another thing and you still go back to that mental illness. You got to say, how many times do I got to do this for you? Yeah. My God. I did it in 98. I did it in 2003. I did it in 2011. What is wrong? Uh, I've already set up the place for you. I'm going to come through for you. But you've got to hang in there. Yes, he is like a refiner's fire. And like launderer's soap. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He wants to clean us, not destroy us. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And the beauty of this picture is that the refiner is looking into the open furnace. I don't know if you ever seen anybody, glory to God, working on silver. They're looking at this big pot. It's like... It's just like the, the, the fire is so hot that it's white. Mm. And they're looking at this fire. Glory to God. How I many know the, the, the fire of the refiner is hotter than just a normal fire? Yeah. And hallelujah. Sometimes God has to put you in some in a place where he's turned up the heat. Somebody say he's turning up the heat in my life. Yeah. Glory to God. And hallelujah. And all he's doing is refining you. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He's refining yeah. you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's looking into the open furnace. He's looking into that pot. And he knows that the process of purifying is going on in your life. But guess, praise God, that when he finished, it will be complete. If it keeps coming back, you have not been refined enough. Yeah. 
There's some things that I did that I will never do again. I will never do it again. I'm confident. I can say that. I pray, God, take me out before I do that again. I don't want to go back through those seasons again. I don't want to be in condemnation with God. I don't want to be on the bad side of God. I want to be ready. I want to always be ready. I want to live a life that no matter when he comes, no matter when he says, Larry, it's your time, I am ready. I want to be ready. I ain't getting ready. See, if you if you if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Oh, praise the Lord yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The process of purifying is complete and the dross is all burnt away. And when he can see his image plainly reflected in the metal, praise God, when the refiner, glory to God, he knows his work is done when he can see himself in the silver. Some of y'all missed that. It's going over your head. My Hallelujah. God. Praise God. And God is not done with you, man of God. God is not done with you, woman of God, until he can see himself in your reflection. Uh, oh. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. When he can see himself, when they cuss you out, but you hold your tongue, he yes. says, I see myself in her. My God. When they talk down on you, but you don't say nothing, he says, I see myself in her. When they treat you wrong, Glory to God. And they promote somebody in front of you. Glory to God. But you hold your peace and you still do your best. God says, I see myself in him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The refiner, the, the purpose of the fire is so that the draws can be burnt away. The purpose of the fire is so that he can see his reflection in you. My God. Preach. The silver ain't ready so you can look and see it. And look at him and say, oh, I see myself. Then he says, they're ready. They're ready. This ministry ain't ready until he can look at us and see his reflection in us. Praise the Lord, somebody. Type what is right. It goes for me. It goes for us as well. We ain't ready until he sees himself in us. Listen, people won't come and people won't go. Praise God. But when they, when they have an encounter with us, they should say, I felt God. Amen. I seen God in them. Yes. I heard God from them. Yes. I had, only thing I experienced was God. Mm. No matter what they choose, mm. that should be their testimony. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. If any of you, praise God, hallelujah, are seeking the Lord at this time, I just want you to understand what it means. Anybody listening at the sound of my voice, praise God, you are seeking a fire which will test you. If you're seeking after God, you're seeking after a fire. Mm. Ooh, don't let nobody tell you that the Christian life is, is just easy and we skipping around. No, 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 no. no it's not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All the way from the back. Somebody should say amen to that. Amen. Like I say, it is amen. not. <laughs> the Christian life ain't that, ain't that easy, right? right? That's how you know she's really trying to live it the right way. Praise God. Glory to God. It's worth it, though. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it ain't, amen, as simple as it sounds. Glory to God. Which is why, when it's all said and done, glory to God, I'm not missing heaven for nobody. Right. Praise God. I didn't just stay in and do all this kind of stuff for all these years to miss God at the end. The devil is a liar. You a liar, and the devil is a liar, and everybody around you is a liar. I ain't missing it. I ain't missing heaven. Listen, hallelujah. If you are seeking after the Lord, you seek him after his fire. My God. Hallelujah, which will test you. Yes. Which will consume hallelujah, you. Amen. It will consume much that has been dear to you as well. Yes. Praise God. The reason why people fall off is because there's a fire coming up. Yes. My God. Hallelujah. My God. You can't see it now without human eyes, but I guarantee you. Mm. Praise God. There's a fire on you. Mm. There's a fire on you. Yeah, God. That's why people drop off Ooh. because they say something yeah. about her. No. She's here, she's our friend, but there's something different about her. Come on, sir. And you heard it before. There's something God. different about him. Mm. He's here with us, but uh, yeah. you know, leave him alone, leave him out of us because there's yeah. something different about him. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
We are not to expect Christ to come and save us in our sins. He will come and save us from our sins. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He will come and save us from our sins. Mm -hmm. If you're in sin, praise God. The scripture says if you say, those who are in sin, keep on sinning. Those who are doing right, keep on doing right. That's what it says in Revelations. Yeah. Whatever you choose, keep doing. You do you. Yeah. Hallelujah. But he wants to save you from it. He wants to save you from it. Right. Praise God. The choice is yours. Right. He ain't going to make that choice for you. He could have made us all robots and all of that, but that's not what he wanted. Even the angels still have a choice. Yeah. The angels can still fall. Praise God. We all have a choice to make. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are enabled by faith to take Christ as a savior, remember that you take him as the purger and purifier. All right. For it is from sin that he saves us. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will sit as a refiner. Mm. It didn't say he will stand as a refiner. He will sit as a refiner. Mm. What a comfort it is that he surrenders this work to no other hands than his own. It didn't say the angels will refine you. Mm. It didn't say this person. It says he will sit. Yes. Isn't it wonderful to know that God himself is the one that's doing the purifying in your life? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That's enough to make somebody shout. Yes. Ooh, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Because it is God's hands that's purifying me. It is God's hands. It's the hands of God that is forming me, fashioning me. That's good. That is pure. Hallelujah. The sin posture shows that, hallelujah, the refiner, hallelujah, may seem a little bit indifferent. Hallelujah. But he is not. He is carefully working with the sin. Mm. I got to sit down for this. Let me pull my robe up. Let me get my, put my sleeves up. Let me sit down. Mm. Meaning that this ain't going to be a quick work. This is going to be, let me sit down. Yeah. God is refining you. In the name of God. Thank you, Jesus. He's refining us. Hallelujah. And he ain't done until you take that last breath. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. He's carefully working with the silver. He's burning off and he's scraping away the dross that the, that the, that the flame brings to the top. Hallelujah. It's the, it's the heat that brings the imperfections to the top. It's the heat, it's the fire that brings the dross, amen, that takes it out of the out of the element and makes it rise to the top. And when it rises to the top, you know what the refiner does? He scrapes it off. Oh. Tell me, I need to Google and look at somebody who's working with silver. He scrapes all of that stuff off. He scrapes it. He keeps doing that and he keeps scraping and keeps it until he can look and see his reflection. Yeah, God. Uh, yeah, God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think that when uh, when when I when I think about the sitting down posture, and then it to me it exemplifies the patience of God. Yes, amen. Praise God that He is patient with us. Hallelujah. As if he seems, as if he's saying that this is stern work and I need to sit down for it. I'm going to take my time. For I'm going to need to take care. I'm going to need to take time. And I'm going to need to have constant watchfulness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you are just now in the fire, men and woman of God, hallelujah, be of good cheer. Because it shows that at least you are silver. Hallelujah. And are capable of performing more acceptable services in God's holy temple. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, God works with silver mm. and he fashions it as fine gold. <laughs> praise God. When people say, when people see the image, praise God, of the streets of gold in heaven, wouldn't it be interesting if it's really just silver power so much? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of y'all can get that in your way home. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you see the shows and they talk about killing Dracula and all of that, what do they use? Silver. Yeah. Praise God. He will purify the sons of Levi. Hallelujah. In the first two chapters of Malachi, the Lord spoke out against corruption of the priests. But here, God gave his ultimate answer for that corruption. The Messiah will purify the sons of Levi. Hallelujah. Have you ever reflected upon the fact that when Christ's refining work is done upon us, there will never be any need for him to do it again. When God truly does his work and you allow him to do his work and he completes it, there's no need for him to do it again. 
There's no need for him to do it again. Hallelujah. I'm helping somebody there because some of us, amen, again, that mental illness that I keep talking about, we go back and we act like we're going through something all over again. When God said, I did that for you 10 years ago, why do you keep bringing it up? Why do you keep acting like it just happened? Woo! I already healed you from that. Yeah. I already brought you over that. Yeah. I already encouraged you beyond that. Glory to God. But some of us, praise God. Amen. Listen, there's a scripture in the Bible. Amen. Where where uh, Elisha was coming and he called amen, somebody to follow after him and the person said, well, let me go back and, and, and uh, I have to bury somebody. What he says? He said, let the dead bury the dead. You know, what I do to you? Go ahead, go ahead back. <laughs> Listen, go ahead and do you. Amen. He said, let the dead bury the dead. Some of us, glory to God, amen, I just want you to feel a couple weeks, you know, glory to God, amen, and praise God, amen. It's wonderful when you're dealing with a godly family. Because we don't mourn like everybody in life. Praise God, and when you're going through this before and all of that, listen, you know how to keep yourself, handle yourself. Praise God, glory to God, because if not, you're going to be messed up. You're going to be messed up. You're going to be messed up. If you don't have the mind of God, this is his personality. You say what you want. Look at what God said. He said, let the dead bury the dead. When David, glory to God, amen, when his son died, praise God, they say he fasted and he mourned and he did all this kind of stuff, glory to God, amen. But when he realized that his son had passed on, the Bible says he got up, washed his clothes, and he said, give me something to eat. All right. He said, they can't, he said, and they were like, I don't understand. He was just all bent out. Like, he said, I can't do nothing for him. He said, I'm going to go to him. But he can't come back to me. Hallelujah. When you have a God-centric view, how many know you can move on with your life? All right. Glory to God. It ain't that you forget the person. Glory to God. It ain't that you are quit the person. Amen. And, 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 and not, amen, giving, amen, what you need to give to that person. Glory to God. Amen. But we have a blessed assurance yes, Jesus. that we will see them again. Yes, God. Glory to God. Yes. That's the scriptures. Yes. That's the promise. That's one of the promises of God. So if you believe that, glory to God, then what are you doing? Right. Glory to God. It's going to be all right. They're all right. They're okay. It's going to be fine. It hurts because we're human. But we have to remind ourselves. We have to remind ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have to reflect upon the word of God. That's why it says faith coming by him. Hearing about the word of God, you got to keep hearing the word of God. Remind us, oh, you know what? The word says that we, we need not dread that we have yet to pass through purging flames in another world. In another world, and glory to God, amen. Because God is purifying us while we are here. Yes, thank praise God. We ain't going to hell, so we ain't going to be in a hell fire, right. but we are going to be in a refiner's fire. As soon as you say, Jesus, come into my heart, welcome to the fire, glory to God, everything changes. Glory to God. And then what else did he say? He said, I will bear, I will be a swift witness against sorcerers. Sorcerers. That's the first thing he said. He didn't say adultery first. He didn't say all that. He said sorcerers. Some of us need to be careful. Y'all, this astrology, like, how you doing? Um, my name is Carrie, and I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Libra. And I'm like, what are you talking about? All right. <laughs> Oh, Libras don't do that, child. They know everything. Libras are, you know, they say that Libras is very uh, quiet, but we can get you back. Like, anybody ever taught you like that? Like, girl, you know the whole thing, don't you? Nobody got. But what do you know about the scriptures, though? Oh, well, I went to church. Can't tell you not one near scripture. Except for Jesus wept, and for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's the only thing they know. But we got, but they can tell you about that astrology. Oh, it's a full moon, and you know what that means because it was a third, and they were like, girl, we know about that stuff. How many know that's a religion? Praise God. And people go home and like, what's that smell of? Well, I put turpentine in the corners because that's supposed to get it, keep the bad spirits away. Girl, you know, you in the witchcraft? And what's that smell? I want to burn sage because it gets away. It's like, where is my you? I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Oh, I got some food for you. I ain't eating that food. I don't know what you <laughs> the is, uh, I don't know what you put in that food. Girl, you're crazy. So my you my young men out there, amen, and young woman, amen, because the men is, is just as bad. Glory to God do all kind of crazy stuff. 
The men, they, if they can't smoke weed and get high, they don't want to talk to you. Right, let me get this in me first. Let me smoke this bud. Glory to God. Let me throw back these drinks. Let me get nice. All right, now I can be nice to you. If they got to do that, they are warlock. They got to get these spirits in them just so they can treat you. As soon as they go down, you better get out of the house and they're going to start smacking you up, yelling, and it's, it's on. Glory to God. They got to medicate themselves. They got to do that little seance. It's the same stuff Native Americans used to do, we still do some ways. Same thing. You burn the sage, smoking the marijuana or whatever plant they smoke, and all the same thing. Drinking a certain certain liquors, the same thing. Glory to God. But he says, I will be a swift witness against sorcery. I ain't talking about big hardcore black magic witchcraft. I ain't talking about people that do drink blood. I ain't talking about people that go and dig up the cemeteries and get the skulls and they do all of this magic. I ain't gonna say what kind of magic they do with the skulls and they do all of this kind of stuff. I ain't talking about all of that. I ain't talking about Catholic magic. I ain't talking about Jewish Kabbalah magic that people are using. They use the Holy Scriptures and meant to do incantation. I ain't even talking about that. But God says, I will be a swift witness against sorcery. Some people that are blessed, it's not blessed because of God. They're blessed because they are doing sorcery. People, uh, it, this has been happening over the last couple of years. I'm getting free requests from people that says they, that they can bring me financial blessings. Now look at the picture. There's a guy with a hat on. And I guess people I'm like, man, delete, block. Don't he see apostle? Don't he see pastor? Or anything? You know, but he's telling me he can help me. Call his one eight eight whatever number, and he'll do whatever. All right, you see all this money around him, which means that what if people are paying for these blessings that he is supposed to be giving to? Them. You gotta be so careful, so careful. This is the generation that we're living in. I'm gonna talk louder. See, the devil don't want nobody to hear this, but y'all need to hear it to praise God. He says, "I will bear swift." Witness against the sorcerers. When Jesus comes, it's going to be just like that. We're here to hoard and it's going to be over. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God's ultimate purpose is to cleanse society and to change the hearts of men. And when Jesus returns in glory and rules on this earth, evil is going to quickly be punished. Sorcerers. This sin is mentioned first because the Jews became familiar with sorcery and other magical acts during the captivity in Babylon as well. That needs to be known. He says, For I am the Lord and I do not change, therefore you are not consumed. Isn't that wonderful? What if God changed up? How I many know if he changed up, then he can change his mind today. You know what? I'll say all this stuff. I'm going to make them wait. No, I'm going to just get rid of all of them. Praise God that he is immutable. The word is immutable, meaning he is unchangeable. Praise God. That's why the church age is not changing. Amen? He says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Amen? Praise God. God's word didn't change. Don't listen to the preacher that is preaching that right now because of the pandemic and all of that. Because everybody want to have church on the computer now. God didn't say that. God did not say that. I don't care who you are, who you who you watching or whatever. God did not say that. All right? The church is going to stay strong until he returns. Yes. Hallelujah. God has his few. He has his remnant. Praise God that are not afraid. Glory to God. That will still, amen, assemble together and that will still speak out. Praise God. And it's going to be so important, especially at the end time. Hallelujah. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. And God is saying, return to me and I will return to you. Yes. Thank you. Says Jesus. the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return to you? And this is the part that people don't like. Don't like. Praise God. Amen. It says, uh, uh, will a man rob God? <laughs> well, yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you, God? What does the scripture say? In tithes and offerings. Yes, Lord. This is so important. This is going to help you. Praise God. And y'all know why? I don't even preach about money. I, I just put it out there and y'all be obedient to God. Y'all do what you got to do, but I have to preach it so that you can be blessed. Praise God. Malachi 3 9 says this, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Woo! Yes, Jesus. Praise God. If you want to curse yourself, try robbing God. If you want to curse yourself, if you want to curse in your life, you know that there's some people that just does not have a blessing, is not blessed with finances. Do you know that? Some people seem like they're blessed with finance, finances and they, you know, they're able to always have money and do stuff. Some people say they never have money. And if they have money, it's just for a little bit of time. 
And then before they go back to the situation, anybody here with me? I'm talking to somebody the other day, and I was talking about these things to somebody, and the man started crying. A grown man. And he said, every time, and I was explaining this, so I said, you got to watch the spirits attach them, so spirits transfer. And he said, every time he was with this certain person, glory to God, he, he had his own business, he lost his business, he almost lost his house, he, he did lose one of his cars, and all this kind of stuff. And then he said, he said, um, he called me Rev. Rev, as soon as I broke up, as soon as I broke up, he says, my mom was telling me she ain't the one, leave her, blah, blah, blah. As soon as I broke up, I got my business back. He said, I got all the money, you know, I got that, and I got company cars, and all that kind of stuff, right? And he said, as soon as he was thinking about taking her back, he said, things are happening again. And he said, I learned my lesson. And he said, he said, I, he said, I got hair, my, my hair standing up for what I was telling him. I said, some people walk with spirits. Some people have curses, literally curses on their life. Because of things, glory to God, the way that they handle themselves. If you want to break that curse, you know what you like to break it? You break it by giving. Amen. Praise the Lord. People don't want to hear it. Amen. I, I ain't talking. I don't have no business out there. Right? So who cares what you think? Praise God. Glory to God. And if, if I did, I'm still going to tell you the truth. Praise God. You get blessed by giving. Yes. Hallelujah. If you want to break, amen. So if you can't use this one. You can't never get ahead and all that kind of stuff. Start giving. Yeah. Find glory to God, amen. And or an organization, find a church, a man of God, a woman of God that, that God has his hands on and give to that person. Glory to God. To those people, to that church, to the mission, whatever the case is, praise God. And watch God keep you. Yeah. You will never be yeah. broke. On, God will always take you. While other people are losing their houses, God will save their houses. While other people losing their cars, God will give you cars. Yeah. Praise God. While other people losing their mind, God will keep your mind stable. While other people are getting sick, God will take care of your health. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. this is one of the greatest things in the Bible that is taught uh, specifically. Specific. He is specific. Oh, your money, your money, your money is so important. Which is why I believe. When we get to the system, the market of B666, whatever, where you said the Bible says you can't buy or sell without having a mark, it's going to displease God because now he takes away the net for you to be a blessing to the things of God. Yeah. How are you going to tie an offering when you are when your money amen, is rooted to a satanic system? <laughs> I know so a lot of people never even thought about that. Glory to God. Praise God. Will a man rob God? Hallelujah. He says this. He says, bring all the time to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. I mean, you know that God can do what he wants, but he always uses a human being to do what he wants in the world. Yes, yes. Jesus. He always, he, got, he uses me and you. He always, that's how he operates. Because it would be kind of unfair if he just uses angels to do everything. It would be illegal. It's the way that he set it up. All right? He's going to use a man. He's going to use a woman to get his things out of the earth and this earth realm. He says, he says, then he says what? He says, and try me now in this. Where else have you read where God says, test me in this? Some scripture says, test me in this. Test me. Come on, test me. Basically, he said, see if you can outgive me. See if you can beat God's giving. He's trying to say that if you give and do it the way I told you, glory to God, I want you to test me to see if I will allow you to fail. There's no way that God will allow you to fail. If you are giving the way that he told you to give. Yes, Jesus. Test him. Test him. The scripture says that I have never seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. I'm a living testimony. Glory to God. Yeah. Praise God. When other people sunk and went down, God somehow made a way. All right. All when there was no way, right. glory to God, God made a way where there was no way. Right. Praise God. When the wall was up, God put me, he allowed me to go over the wall. Sometimes he took me through the wall. May God always have a way. Mm. Praise God when you stick with him and do it his way. Try me now in this and see if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that you won't even have room enough to receive it. Yeah. And then watch this other verse, Malachi 3 11. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fall, fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. 
Malachi 3, 12, 12, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. It seems crazy to think that a man can rob God, doesn't it? What could someone possibly steal from God? The Lord explained, hallelujah, that we rob God when we withhold our tithes and our offerings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's astonishing, but it's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's astonishing, but it's true. If we withhold, amen, glory to God, but God says that we're supposed to give, how many know we are self-destructive people? There's a song back in the day, self-destruction. We talk about self-destruction. You remember that man at all? Self-destruction. We talk about self-destruction. Oh, you don't remember that mama? It was the old song. <laughs> self-destruction. Listen, a lot of us are living with a curse. A lot of us, we can't rub two nickels together. We can't do, we can't stay up on our bills. We can't do it for the save our life. Why? Because we are self-destructive. We are self-destructive. God will have avenues for you to do things. And we say, I ain't going to do that. God was like, well, what's wrong with you? I I'm putting this here so that you can eat. I'm putting this here so that you can pay your rent, your mortgage. I'm putting this here so you can pay your bills. But you say, I ain't going to do it. Somebody need to hear this. And then we pay God. And then we become... You know, we're more spiritual than everybody else because now we're praying as if God's going to listen to our, our Holy Ghost prayer. When God ain't paying you no mind because he knows you don't want to work. And God is saying, when you change your mindset and get away, glory to God, amen, from the laziness, Amen. And pray to get away from the slothfulness and thinking that everybody always had to take care of you. Praise God. Glory to God. That's what he said I'm going to do for you. Praise God. Some of us need to get out of that. Everybody is not, is not put here to take care of you. We need to get out of that. Get out of that. Stop teaching the kids that. Stop making it seem like that everybody is. Listen, what, why, why can't you do for yourself? Why can't you handle yourself? Why can't you take care of yourself? Answer that question. Think about it. Why can't you take care of yourself? Why? Right? There's no reason why. If God put the breath in your body, there's no reason why you should not be able to take care of yourself. Yes, you we need that. Praise God. Because if not, now you can be entrained on everybody else. It wasn't only because, praise God, it wasn't, listen, God caught around with because they had unlawful possession of what belonged to God, first of all. It, what God gives us is not ours in the first place. Right. Psalm 24 says, the earth is the most and the fullness the thereof, earth. and everything that dwells here in it. Praise God. So guess what? This, this robe is ain't mine, it's really God's. This building ain't mine, it's God's. This clothes ain't mine, my money, it's not mine anyway, it's God's. So all I'm doing is giving back God money to him in the first place. Yes, Jesus. And then watch this. The other, he only asked for 10%, right? Then the other 90%, whose is that? That's still God's too. That's why I put it out here because that is the mistake we make. Well, the other 90% is mine. I do what I want to do. I'm going to the front of the chair. I gave him 10%. Leave me alone, Pastor. Leave me alone. No, the other 90% is God's too. He's like, what you doing? That's my money too. I didn't tell you to spend it on that coat. I didn't tell you to spend it on that. What are you doing? Praise God. All of it is his. Yeah. But he only requires 10%. Right. He's only asking for it. We say like that. 10%. Glory to God. And when we don't do it his way, we're robbing God. We're thieves. There's not going to be any thieves in heaven. In heaven. That's, a, that's a tough word right there. How are we going to get to heaven when we're, you know, when we get in this, it's going to be thief. <laughs> All right, you're not an adulterer, you're not a fornicator, you're just a big old thief. And you never repented, you never repented because you didn't think what you were doing was wrong. Mm. Watch that one. Praise God. Everything we have belongs to God. Yet God does not normally command us to give us everything that belongs to him. 
it allows us to keep the rest as managers. We are managers of the rest of our lifestyle. We are, that's why we say be stewards of the manifold grace of God. Uh, I know this is right before over some of our heads. Amen. Everything else God leaves to us to manage. Hallelujah. It still belong to what God calls his house, the house of the Lord, but he gives it to you to manage. Amen. The law of Moses, we ain't going to get into that today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But it's in Deuteronomy 14, but he gave a, a, a big system. He gave us, he told us how we were supposed to get it. Praise God. It's one of the passages in Deuteronomy 14, 22, 29. And then if you if you fail to pay your tithe, you were assessed a 20% penalty. Did you know that? So if you made a thousand dollars in a week, you're supposed to give how much? hundred dollars, right? And if you missed that, you had to pay 20%, right? So you were supposed to pay two hundred dollars. Right. You're supposed to pay double. Praise God. That was the Old Testament, the Moses system of, 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 of uh, tithing. All right? You can find that in Levit Leviticus 5, all right? Uh, in Leviticus 22, and Leviticus 27, all right? Nevertheless, the practice and principle of tithing came long before the law. It came before Moses. Did you know that? How do we know that? Why? Because if you look in Genesis 14, Abraham tithed. I don't have time to take you there, but Genesis chapter 14, Abraham tithed. The Bible says that he tithed to Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a type of God. Some of you feel it was even say that Melchizedek was Jesus himself mm -hmm. on the earth. Because why? Because Melchizedek didn't have a father. He didn't have a mother. They didn't know where he came from. He had a king they didn't even know. All right? And we, that's a study all in itself. Who was Melchizedek? And Melchizedek required, he implemented this 10% thing into the earth for his people, for God's people. That's deep. All right? So Abraham was doing it. Abraham, father Abraham. Many sons. He's the one who implemented, all right, way before uh, the time of Moses. Some of y'all gonna catch this. Glory to God, all right? Glory to God. That's Genesis 14, 18 to 20. I'm not gonna read it, all right? But know that you're cursed with the curse if you're robbing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is the answer to all of our problems. Bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. The scriptures didn't say bring the tithes into the storehouse. The scripture says, bring all of the tithes. Bring all of the tithes yes. into the storehouse. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It wasn't that they didn't give anything to God. Praise God. They simply did not bring all the tithes to him. Hallelujah. And so God is saying that we must not fall short in giving God everything that he asks for. Some of us, we do a little bit. This is on so many levels, not just your money. Some of us, I'm going to give him a little bit of respect, but I'm not going to give him all the respect that I know he's supposed to have. All right? I'm going to give him a little bit of love, but I ain't going to give him all the love that I know he deserves. Some of y'all understand. But we, I'm going to do this, but I ain't going to give him all. I ain't going to do all of it. God says, no, I ain't going to bless you until you start doing everything that I told you to do. Everything. Everything. If you know better, do better. Give them all. Just like when we have children. When our children do stuff to us, we ain't going to take, if we tell them to do something, they say, okay, yeah, uh huh. And you're like, what? Well, you better change that attitude just because you say, yeah, it's not enough. Some of y'all understand what I'm saying. Praise God. God says, I want the whole thing. Just get it together. Get it together. Praise God. And then we have to bring the whole time <laughs> into the storehouse. <laughs> Glory to God. We must not fall short in giving God everything that He Ask some more. Glory to God. And so we're under the new covenant. When some people hear this teaching, they say, we're under the new covenant. All right. And um, are we under a similar command of time? Yes, we are. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we need to know that nowhere in the New Testament does it command specifically tithing. Glory to God. But in the New Testament, we need to understand that they didn't ask for 10%. They asked for everything. Ananias and Sapphira got in trouble with, with, with Peter. Glory to God and the, and the apostles because they tried to lie to them. They were supposed to sell all of their homes and their possessions and give everything to the apostles to disseminate it as they wanted. And when Ananias came, you know, he, uh, uh, Peter said, is this everything? He said, yep. He said, why are you trying to lie to the Holy Spirit? Why do we do that? Don't you know that God knows it all anyway? He sees your heart. He knows how much money you make. He knows what you're doing. Glory to God. 
Praise God. He says, bring it off. And he says, because you tried to lie, glory to God, he said, you're going to die. He dropped dead right in front of him. And then later, his wife came, Sapphira, not knowing that her husband was dead, and she tried to play the same game. They were the they were same spirit. I mean, no birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. And they asked her, and she said the same thing. Yeah, yeah we gave it all. He said, okay. Well, they, they just got finished burning your husband. Now they're going to come back and get you because you have lied to the Holy Spirit. They're going to lay you right next to your husband. Bring the whole tithe. This is on so many levels. Don't just get caught up in the money part. Everything that God asks. Yo, I'm going to give God some time. I come to church once every three months. I'll do this to know. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. That's on so many levels. I don't have time to go there. God needs everybody. He needs your time. He needs all the praise. He needs your gifts. Listen, listen, listen. I can go on and on and on. God needs it all. He needs your money too. Yes, he does. He needs all of that. He needs your encouragement in the house. He needs your smile and face. He needs your everything that you have. He needs it. He needs it. For this, amen, in every ministry to be perfect, he needs everybody on board. All right. He needs everybody on board. There's no way, glory to God, that we should have a ministry where there's nobody on the keyboards. There's no way when we shouldn't have a mission with nobody on the drums. It's just because people don't want to give God what he's asking from them. Right. And that's that people in Kenpo, they have decided they ain't going to do it. Right. They need me. I don't need them. And if, you, if you're thinking like that, you have the wrong viewpoint of God. You ain't doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself. And because you should be doing it for God. Right. It's unto the Lord. Not as unto man. And when you're doing it with the right perspective, now God can honor you and bless you. Right. And these same people ain't going nowhere, ain't doing nothing, ain't getting ahead. Right? But in their mind, mental illness, they think they're right. And they're the ones that will try to tell you. If you, if you talk to them, you're like, dude, what is wrong with you? They will try to, and they will act like they're something better than you, bigger than you. Like, what is wrong with you? Do you know who you're talking to? Do you understand? Glory to God. But we got to get it together. We got to get it together. Praise God. It is important to understand that tithing is not a, a principle that depends on any law. Or any law of Moses. It is a God heavenly divine device to make sure that his children are continually blessed Amen. in the land. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hebrews chapter 7. Verses 5 to 9, it says, And indeed those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law. That is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. And it goes on and on. And basically, what this is showing is that when Moses implemented it, it was implemented it meant, um, to take care of the priests because they did not have regular jobs. Glory to God. Amen. Even like now, amen, to those men and women of God that are blessed enough to be in full-time ministry, those to God, they depend on the ministry. Hallelujah. And how many know that's really the way that God wanted it to be? Praise God. Amen. Well, what the New Testament does speak with great clarity on is the principle of giving in 1 Corinthians 16, which I'm not going to read. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 4, you can read it on your own, but it makes it clear that like giving must be periodic, done at regular periods, it must be planned, mean thought of in advance as to what you want to give. It has to be proportional, given in proportion to our blessings, and it's supposed to be private. Not done to make us known as generous givers. All right. Come on. Not done, not done for show. Sure. Amen. We have people, I can tell you all kinds of stories. People back in the day, and you know, they always pull that $100 bill, put it up so everybody can see it, and then you know, no, don't give like that. Don't give like that. Ooh, he, child, he gave $100 every week. Child, he do that. No, don't give Put it in the envelope, seal it, nobody has to see it. Amen. Just the treasures and them will see it. Amen. Praise God. And it's between you and God. Glory to God. Amen. It's Amen. between you and God. As well, 2 Corinthians 9 tells us that giving must be generous, um, giving more rather than less, freely giving. God wants to, you don't want nobody forcing you to give, which is why you never see that in this church. We don't do that. All right? Freely given, not they're not a guilt or manipulation. Ain't nobody gonna guilt you, nobody gonna come to you and say, Hey, I'll see you only put seven dollars in. Glory to God. We just want to teach it when we expect you, amen. Praise God to be obedient, amen. 
Now manipulate you in this thing and how you know the God says you love the cheerful giver. Cheerful giver. Yes, Lord. Meaning you're supposed to be happy. That's why normally you say put on some giving music. Yeah, man, some marching, something happy, something upbeat. Glory to God. I am happy. Happy. Glory to God. I'm happy. Glory to God. I'm being a gift to be a blessing to the Lord. It's one of the few ways we get to help the ministry. Yes. For many of us, there is no other way. Glory to God. Praise God. This ministry gets to be able to help out in the Pakistan and Africa and whatever these different places. Praise God. But if you ain't giving to the ministry, how are you touching these places? Yeah. What are you doing? Yes. It's an easy way to say, yes, I'm doing this because I know that this ministry is doing this. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. So he says, do this so that there may be fruit in my house. Amen. And I'm bringing this to a close. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But I just want us to get this principle. Amen. He says, and then I will open for you the window of heaven and cry out for you so much blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Yes. This is the response of God. Amen. This is a response that God promised when his people did as he told them to. He would bless them both with provision, provision and protection. Again, he will bless you with provision and protection. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed that him ready. Even at times when, when things seem to be low in my life, guess what? We still ate three meals a day. Anybody here with me today? Praise God. I don't see anybody in here dying of starvation. I can show you pictures of people that are starving, all right? I can see your ribs and all that kind of No, hey, that's not us. We're, we're fine. We're blessed. Amen? And so that's because, amen, of the blessing that God has on our life, amen, by following his mandate. God says, I will rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke him. The reference of the window of heaven reminds us to the glorious account. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 7, glory to God. Amen. But God literally said that I will open up a window in heaven and pour out so much blessings. Can you imagine? He oh, there's a window in heaven that he opens up. Hey! My God. And he pours it. Can you imagine? When you do it right. I ask for whatever, 10%, whatever, and God said, you yeah. do whatever, all your time, yeah. you do whatever. Yeah. And then when the God sees you do all that right, and you're doing it cheerfully, do that. What do you do? You open up your window and say, Mike, hold that window. Yeah. Bless you. That's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. And so now we're blessed. Yeah. Now we're not sick. Yeah. Now we see God is adding on, and now we see that God is doing things. Why? Because we have. Live according to the principles, amen. Always glory to God. And so now there is no reason that God, amen, would not allow us to be blessed. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for their sake. My Lord. My Lord. They're doing my son is doing what I told him to do. Let me go. My daughter is doing what I told her to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Give your way out. Yeah. Give your way out. Give your way out. We've had people, I know people that understand this principle. We've had people here every year and again and again and again. We give thousands and thousands of men. The donkeys don't tell nobody. But they understand and I look and they're blessed. Yes, amen. They're blessed. Amen. Yes. Always blessed. Yes. It's a principle. Yes. Bless yes. the things of God and watch God bless you. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes we are being too harsh against God. God is saying, Jesus, did you do the way I told you to do it? Yes. The next scripture in Malachi 3.13 says, your words have been harsh against me. Has anybody ever said any harsh words against God before? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. From the pulpit to the door, from the back to the floor, maybe all of us have been there. God, this ain't fair, God. God, this ain't right. God, I'm doing everything right. God, this ain't, this don't make any sense. Glory to God. God, why the heck happened to me? Why is this going on? You ain't fair, God. That ain't fair. This ain't fair. God, if you was really good, some of you understand what I'm saying. Let's be real. This ain't right. I ain't going today because God, I did all that, and you ain't, you still ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing for me anyway, God. Glory to God. I know this is what's be going on in our spirit. Praise God. And what is he saying to you, Malachi 3, 3, 13? Your words have been harsh against me. 
Watch your words. God reads your thoughts. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Let yet you say, what have we spoken against you? <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, what have you said against the Lord? I'll tell you what you said. is the very next verse, 14. It says, you have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept this ordinance? And what have we, and that we have walked this ordinance before the Lord most? That's why people don't come to church anymore. Because it looks like the world is more blessed than the people that come to church. Somebody should have said amen. Glory yeah. yeah. to God. That's why we got to make sure we carry ourselves right. We don't have no time for lack. We don't have no time to be busted. We don't have no time for that. There's no time for that. We got to get ourselves together and keep ourselves together. Somebody need to hear me. We don't got time to keep going through that. Get yourself together and keep yourself together. Please hear me. If you ever go through a time where you lost it all, you got to get it in your heart. I ain't never going to be like that again. If I got to work two jobs, three jobs, if I got to work all day, if I got to work all night, if I got to do this or whatever the case, I don't care if I'm sick, I don't care if I'm hurting, I'm not going to be broke. Time out for that. No, I ain't losing another house. No, I ain't losing another car. No, I ain't losing nothing. No. Anybody here with me today? Thank you, if you're not operating like that, I have one question. What is wrong with you? What are you waiting on? Time waits for nobody. That's mental illness. If I work this week, I'm going to get the money next week. You got to do something to get the harvest. If you don't work, you're not going to get anything. What is wrong with us? We don't have any money because you don't work. It's tight. But it's right. So now we call the proud blessed. <laughs> For those who do wickedness are raised up. And they even tip God and seemingly go free. Oh, Hallelujah. Just want to encourage somebody, it is not useless to serve God. Hallelujah. And even if your words were harsh against hey! God, hallelujah. God will forgive you. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. I believe we all need to repent to God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. This morning I, I hear it. Amen. In the atmosphere, I sense it. Hallelujah. If you're watching, you need to repent to God. And say, God, I'm starting over right now. Right now. Right now. Everything you ask me to do, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to do my part. And God, I'm going to trust you to do your part. And God, I'm going to do it right. God, I'm not going to I'm not going to rob you anymore. I'm not going to skim off the top anymore. I'm not going to do anything less than my best and expect to get God, Father, God bless. I'm going to do what you told me to do and give you, God, what you told me to give you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why we want? Because we want God to remember everything that we ever did. It's called a book of remembrance. It's right there in Malachi 3. Malachi 3 is a very important chapter. It says, Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and what? And heard them. <clears throat> so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And who meditate on his name. A book of remembrance was written, glory to God. Hallelujah. Before him, for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on the name. What did God say? He said, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. Yes, on the day that I make them my, on the, on the day that I make them my jewels, uh, the translation of that in Hebrew is my treasures, uh, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Glory to God. Basically, when all is said and done, when we get to heaven, when God is done with us, when we all see each other on the other side of this life, we want to see those who are really blessed and those who are really not. God says he's going to make us his treasures. Yeah. Revelation said he's going to give us crowns and jewels. And, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to bow down and we're going to give those crowns back to him. 
That's the heart of a true child of God. It ain't nothing about us. We're going to be so grateful that we made it. I know I am. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for heaven. I'm going to have so much fun in heaven. Oh, I'm just give God. You can have it. You can have it. Just can I run to my magic? Can I run? Oh, can I fly around heaven? Can I race Michael? Can I? Oh, listen. Whew. It's going to be such a wonderful time. Can I see my grandma? Can I see my granddad? Can I? Oh, it's going to be wonderful. You should then again deserve between the righteous and the wicked, and you should want to see who's really blessed and who's really not. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those who fear the Lord spoke to one another. And so that's why we need each other. Yeah. We need to be able to talk to each other and tell each other, hasn't God been good? Talk to somebody right now and let them know. Ask them, say, hasn't God been good? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good, right? Amen. God has been good. He says, when you do that, when you encourage each other in the Lord, He writes you down in the book of remembrance. Yes, Lord. That's powerful. That's powerful. He remembers you. He remembers you. We remember, amen, when we encourage each other. A book of remembrance was written before them for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. We got to spend time meditating on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall be mine. They shall be my jewels. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we give God praise for that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because if we're jewels, that means we are adorable. If we are jewels, that means that we are, amen, we last. That means we, st we are sturdy. Glory to God. We're supposed to be like jewels. Glory to God. So don't worry about what it looks like, amen, amen, in some ways, amen, on this earth. Don't worry about, amen, when it looks like the drug dealer, amen, is, is doing better than you. Don't worry when it looks like that loose person, amen, seem like they got a husband, and they seem like this person got a wife, and they flying everywhere. Don't worry about that. Praise God. Amen. Because God has his blessing on the other side of your obedience. Amen. As you obey God, amen, and his principles, what God has for you is for you. Amen. And there is nothing or no one that can hold you back from the things that he has amen. for you. Give God his share. That's what the message is about. Give God his share. This is not just about money. In every aspect of your life, how often do you think about God? Hopefully not just on Sunday morning, Glory to God, or if it's Saturday night, like, oh yeah, church tomorrow. Not just that. How often do you meditate? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of God, nor standeth in the ways of nor sitteth in the seat of scorpion, but his delight is the law of the Lord, and in that law does he meditate day and night. and night. How often do we meditate on God? Do we think about him? How much time do we give him? How much of our substance do we give him? Have we ever, do we sweat? We have some people, amen, glory to God, that all they want to do is just walk in the church. Glory to God. I understand some things on certain levels. And how many know that you, like, just like the scripture just said, you can't get in the way, glory to God, of people that are trying to be a blessing. It is a service as unto the Lord. I got one person that pays the church to clean the church. Isn't that amazing? He pays the church to clean the church. And he says, thank you, thank you, Master. Thank you. Glory to God. And the person is blessed. Yeah, He's looking at their account. Let me show you this. Oh, wow, okay. Okay, the person is blessed. Amen. Blessed. Glory to God. Change your mindset. Those who will be the greatest among you will be the greatest servant. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. Too many of us try to be on top and be in charge and be in front of everybody and tell everybody what to do. God is saying, shut up, small your home. And just serve me. Be humble. The scripture says, humility come before honor. Yes, Jesus. And he wants to honor all of us. Yeah. He does. He does. Can we give God a hand clap right there? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Don't worry. 
God will give you your rightful share at the right time. He don't make mistakes, and he is never late. He may not come when you want, but he always comes on time. Praise God. If you have been, if you know that this 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 message has hit home a little bit, glory to God. And you know that you have been saying some harsh words against God, and you just want to, Amen. Come on, come on up, Amen. You just want to touch the Lord, Amen. You all touch him, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you know you have not been given God anything that is going right through your hands, glory to God, Amen. If you just want to come on up, Amen. And make amends, Amen. The altar is open. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I believe, glory to God, Amen. Glory to God. Come on, come on up, Amen. That this is a time that we should be repenting. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Any spirit of pride, glory to God. Hallelujah. You want to get rid of that. Hallelujah. Don't let pride keep you back. Glory to God. From making a declaration to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God that everything that I am and everything that I'm not is yours. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless God. We bless God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you're watching, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I ask you to touch your computer or touch your phone. Glory to God. And we want to include you in these prayers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we want to say, we want to give God everything. Hallelujah. That is his. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I praise God for loving and doing. I just want to ask y'all just to raise your hands. Raise your hands. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless you. I thank you, Lord, Father God, Lord, for my sisters, Father God, Lord, their daughters, even as they stand at the altar. Oh God, we praise you, God, even right now, Father God, Lord, for their humility. Hallelujah, heart, Father God, Lord. Even as they're up here, God, Lord, to make a declaration. Hallelujah, God, Lord, to you. Oh God, Lord, in the sight of heaven, in the sight of hell. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord, that they are not going to withhold anything. Hallelujah, anything, God, Lord, in any way, in any measure, or any form. Hallelujah. They're not going to hold you back any longer, Father God. They're going to give you everything. Hallelujah, Father God, that you deserve, Father God. They're going to give you your share. And I praise God, Father God, Lord, Father God, Lord, for the intent of the heart, even now, God, in this moment of God. I bless you for her, Father God, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for her. Oh, Father God, Lord, she's a mother. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. Hallelujah. She's a friend. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. She's a businesswoman, Father God, Lord. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. She's Father God, Lord, she's searching, God, Lord. Hey, God, Lord, even, Father God, Lord, for purpose, and God, Lord, even right now, God, Lord, you are instilling in her, you're pouring in, in her, Father God, Lord, what it is, God, Lord, concerning, God, Lord, Father God, Lord, her life, even right here, God, Lord, in this realm. And so we magnify you, God, even right now, Father God, Lord, anything, God, Lord, hallelujah, God, Lord, any voice, God, Lord, that will be confusing in her ears, Father God, Lord, I strip that, Father God, Lord, I block, hallelujah, Father God, Lord, from here, Father God, from here, anything, God, Lord, that will be confusing. Even now, God, in the name of Jesus, and I pray that you speak to her. Hallelujah, Father God. She's going to give you all the time that you deserve. God, Lord, she's going to give you, God, Lord, the fruit of her labor. Oh, Father God, Lord, she's going to give you, Father God, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Father God, Lord, more mental ascent, God, Lord, Father God. Her mind is going to be more stayed on you. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. Her words, Father God, Lord. Hallelujah, God, Lord, is going to be more about you, Father God, Lord. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. She is declaring even now that she's going to give you everything, everything that she is. And everything that she's not, hallelujah, Father God, Lord, we say together that it is yours. I pray that you encourage her heart, keep her spirit, hallelujah, even her mind stayed on you, and even as Father God, Lord, she didn't come along, she came up, Father God, Lord, for progeny, God, Lord. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord, her daughter, I thank you, Lord, Father God, Lord, for this young woman of God, hallelujah, Father God, Lord, hallelujah, who is blessed, hallelujah, Father God, Lord, Father God, who takes the things of God seriously, hallelujah, God, Lord, she's a praiser, hallelujah, God, Lord, she's a worshiper, even at a young age, hallelujah, she's a leader and she doesn't care, God, Lord, Father, God, Lord, what people think. Oh, God, Lord, and I pray, God, that even right now, God, Lord, as she's going to not robbery, God, Lord, think, God, Lord, to even, God, Lord, to march to this altar with her mother. Oh, God, Lord, that you give her a blessing, hallelujah, Father, God, Lord, a sevenfold blessing, hallelujah, Father, God, Lord, that in the future, that everything that she touched, hallelujah, Father, God, Lord, will be blessed, even now, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, Lord, Father, God, Lord, for scholarships. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that she'll be able to choose 
between what institution, God Lord, that she's going to go to at the right time, Father God Lord. Oh God Lord, because the blessings, God Lord, that you're pouring in into her life even right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And little sweetheart, God is telling me to tell you this. Hallelujah. Start implementing the things that you heard even today. If you get $10, put $1 into the offering plate, okay? Hallelujah. Because you understand it and you know it. Hallelujah. And then God says, Hallelujah, that He has a powerful, powerful purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And He does not want you to lack any good thing. Hallelujah. As I touch your boat, even in Hallelujah, Hallelujah, as I touch your boat. Hallelujah. I break every generational curse of lack. I break every generational curse. Hallelujah. Uh, even of uh, even since I was preaching, I'm going to say a mental illness. Hallelujah. I'm going to break, we break every generational curse of infirmity. Hallelujah. We break every generational curse of fear. God didn't give you the spirit of fear, woman of God. But the power and the love and the sound mind. And fear has been holding you back long enough. Hallelujah. But God says he's stripping you from that. Hallelujah. Even now. There's things that you want to say and want to do. And God has progressively, hallelujah, allowed you to go through some things. And he said, hallelujah, he just had you in a refiner's fire. Praise God. But he's sitting down and he's fashioning you with his hand. Harvest House Restoration Center. Located at 410 North Hanover Street, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, 17013. Senior Pastor, Apostle Dr. Larry Burchett Jr. Co-Pastor Prophetess, Dr. Joanna Burchett. Our vision is to go farthest for God's harvest and to bring restoration to God's nations. Like David said, I was happy when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And beloved, we would love for you to be in the house with us so that we can go after the harvest and experience God's presence together. See a smiling face in the place. We love you. God bless you.